Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and it's official that Apple will be holding a special event on September 15th. That's next week on Tuesday. And while many of us were expecting the iPhone 12 to be the showrunner at this event, we had some last minute reports that the iPhone 12 may not show up at all. Whether or not the iPhone 12 shows up at all is anyone's guess at this point, but I'm pretty confident that no matter what happens, we will be seeing a brand new Apple Watch Series 6 and what looks like a lower cost Apple Watch, which we will be calling the Apple Watch SE. So with potentially two new Apple Watch models being announced next week, I thought it would be fun to go over everything we know about these two new Apple Watch models. First, let's cover the more exciting model, the Apple Watch Series 6. Now last year, the Series 5 was a very, very minor update in the scope of Apple Watch revisions. It brought us an always on display, its flagship feature, a new titanium finish, 32 gigabytes of storage, and a compass. Even though it came with an S5 chip, the performance was exactly the same as the old S4 chip. So for the Series 6, we are expecting a bigger update than what we got with the Series 5. Now the design is expected to stay relatively the same. The big redesign for the Apple Watch was with the Series 4 generation, and it seems like Apple likes to keep their designs around for about three years now. With that being said, we could see some minor revisions, like a solid state button on the side rather than a physical one, and either new colors like a matching navy blue stainless steel model to go alongside that rumored iPhone 12 Pro color or a new watch material. Each year, Apple likes to offer one new variant or design for the Apple Watch to keep things fresh, even if there isn't exactly a design change, and I expect that to stay the same for this year. As for what new material it could be, well, I wouldn't expect exactly a new watch material this year like we got with titanium last year, but we could see older options returning from the Apple Watch Series 3, like the black ceramic version. Currently, the Series 5 is only only available in the white ceramic, so this could be the new Apple Watch edition. The real changes to the Series 6 will mostly be on the inside, with this year's version suspected to include the S6 chip, this time with an actual performance improvement though, and likely even more of a focus on efficiency gains to keep the battery life longer, which will help power the plethora of new features. One of those new features is the inclusion of a new health sensor in the form of a blood oxygen sensor. This blood oxygen sensor would be able to detect as you might guess, your blood oxygen levels, which a normal level would read from about 95 to 100%, and a lower level could be as low as 80%, which could then lead to compromised brain or heart health. As of right now, we only know based on code found in iOS 14 that Apple is planning on adding this health sensor to the Apple Watch, and we don't know 100% how they plan to really use this sensor to give actual real world user benefits. Like Apple probably won't be displaying the percentages of your blood oxygen levels, but it could be detecting them silently in the background and then send you an alert when you get a low reading, very similarly to how they pop up high and low heart rate notifications. This sensor could also help with some of the mental health features we've been hearing about from John Prosser. Prosser says the Series 6 will be able to help manage stress levels and even detect panic attacks. So for example, if you're hyperventilating, it could run you through some breathing exercises to help calm you down, or if you're experiencing a full blown panic attack, then the sensors are apparently sophisticated enough to warn the user that they are about to experience one. Apparently this would all be happening in the background, which is a good thing. I don't think people want a complication or a status bar with the percentage showing you your exact mental state. I feel like that would cause even more anxiety. So this will likely just be another helpful tool like the high heart rate notification, ECG monitor, and fall detection. As for other changes this year, as evidence suggests with watchOS 7, Apple will be removing the force touch feature from the Series 6, much like they removed the 3D touch functionality with the iPhone 11 Pro. This was the feature that allowed you to press down on your Apple Watch's display with more force to surface additional UI options and shortcuts. And in watchOS 7, that has pretty much been removed and now in some instances has been replaced by just a long press or by giving you more user interface choices 
with the watch's interface. So you really don't have to use that long press or force touch as much as you used to. The removal of the force touch sensor gives Apple more room inside of the watch. And based on some of the leaks surrounding the Series 6, Apple is expected to increase the battery capacity this year from a 296 milliamp hour battery to a 303.8 milliamp hour battery. Honestly, a pretty small change in overall battery capacity, but at this size, literally every little bit helps, and coupled together with power efficiency savings on that S6 chip, it could lead to some slightly better battery life. There's also been some rumblings, although really not backed up as much with significant evidence that Apple could be adding a Touch ID sensor. Some rumors say it could be implemented into the digital crown, which I think may not be possible considering it already is being used for the ECG reader, or it could be implemented directly into the display like some Android phones have. Touch ID on the watch would honestly be a pretty great feature for an added step in security for Apple Pay purchases, or if we're simply unlocking your watch without a pin. If they did add Touch ID, I would also like the option of unlocking my iPhone with my watch, which might sound strange at first, but right now we kind of have to wear face masks outside, which can make Face ID kind of cumbersome. So if I had the ability to unlock my iPhone with my watch, like I can already do with my Mac, and by having that done through a Touch ID sensor, I feel like that would be a pretty great feature, especially right now. As for what features not to expect, well, we've heard for a few years now that Apple has been working on a micro LED display. A micro LED display would offer a lot of the same benefits as an OLED display, but without a lot of the negatives like screen burn-in, and it would be even more power efficient, making it the ideal screen technology to use for a smartwatch. However, even though Apple is hard at work with the development of micro LED displays for the Apple Watch and other products, we still aren't expecting to see those ship this year on the Apple Watch, and we probably won't be expecting to see micro LED displays for at least the next few years. Okay, so that's pretty much all we know about the Series 6. So let's turn our attention to the Apple Watch SE. Now I'm calling this the Apple Watch SE because we don't have any other name to call it. And it's basically just being referred to right now as a lower cost Apple Watch. We first heard about this Apple Watch SE from a report out of Mark Gurman from Bloomberg saying that Apple is working on a lower cost Apple Watch, but he didn't give us any other additional product information. He just stated that Apple is working on a lower cost Apple Watch. At the time, I didn't know if this was supposed to be a Series 3 design of the Apple Watch with a modern chip inside of it, or an Apple Watch Series 4 or Series 5 type of design with a few features missing. Well, based on today's leaks and rumors, it looks like it might actually be the latter option. We have a fresh report from John Prosser saying that a more affordable Apple Watch is on the way with code names for the 40 and 44 millimeter versions and a cellular version as well. And some details and features on what they will lack from the Series 5 and Series 6. So apparently this cheaper Apple Watch will be based on the Series 4 design, which granted is the same design as the Series 5, but is missing the always on display. This SE Apple Watch would be missing that always on display. It would also, according to John Prosser, have no ECG, and the system in a package would include the M9 motion coprocessor. I thought that detail was a little strange, considering Apple usually doesn't highlight that, but okay, that might be just some bit of information the source had. All of this information does sound credible to me because another Apple tipster, Love to Dream, also tweeted out about a new Apple Watch, which would be an Apple Watch Series 5 without the ECG reader. Love to Dream also points out that he expects the Series 3 Apple Watch to continue to be sold at a lower price point. So with this pricing scheme, we could see an Apple Watch Series 6 starting at $400, an Apple Watch SE at $250 or $300, and the Series 3 still being sold either at the same $200 price point or being dropped even lower to $150. Hopefully it's the latter because I think that would be an amazing lineup for the Apple Watch and it would honestly just have price points for everyone. A $150 Apple Watch Series 3 would be really nice to see, but that's all we know about the Apple Watch Series 6 and the newly revealed Apple Watch SE. Again, we don't have to wait too much longer to see if this information is correct because the next Apple event is just 
four days away now. So if you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, well, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, like maybe buy some of those new Apple Watches when they come out, well, be sure to check out some of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.